All right, good morning, everyone. Dan here from Tradingology and the trading room session for February 4th, Thursday. So we got our second one going of the second month. Good to see you guys. Dave is not with us yet. I'm sure he'll be here shortly, but we'll get everybody fired up here. We'll take a quick look at uh, some of our weekly uh, reports here. It is unemployment claims day. Forecasting 828,000. Here comes Dave, we'll let him in here. And then uh, we see, last week it was 812, we talked about it. And once again, almost 800,000 people, new unemployment claims, 779,000. But you know, if you wanna spin that the right way, they say it's better than expected than last week and it's the lowest in two months, but yet it's still almost 800,000 new people that are filing unemployment. So I don't read that as good, but apparently they like to spin it that way. Good morning, BD. Good to see you. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Happy Thursday. And I will put yourself <laughs> early on too. We have the polar vortex upon us this weekend. So it might come to you on Monday. Yeah, I heard another storm was coming. We actually got about, uh, I'd say a good seven, eight inches over the last couple of days. Today's clear, but yeah, we got snow right now and temperatures are going to hit 20 below this weekend. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Prepare. Oh. Yeah, oh, that's terrible. I'm really getting sick of shoveling and snow blowing in the snow. Good morning, Andre. Uh, good morning, everybody. Well, yeah, so yeah, big news there. The uh, unemployment uh, numbers, new claims is, uh, is better. <laughs> I love how they spin it. Anything else interesting here? Let's see. Uh, yeah, that was a headline on CNBC. Better than expected. Yeah, figure that out. You know, however you want to spin it, they're they're great at that. And all oh, the other good one I saw was Yellen's now gonna. She's vowing to probe into the market mania and do a consumer protection test. I can only imagine what that's gonna be. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. So um, maybe you need to take a test before you start trading or something, just to make sure you understand the risks. Um, well, is that, is that just a, a game? Yeah, it's not. A, it's not. Yeah, it's not a terrible idea. Uh, but you know, it's funny. Yellen is is doing the investigation when um, the clearinghouse for Robinhood is Citadel, and Citadel paid her eight hundred and ten thousand dollars in speaking fees. I wonder how impartial she can be. Oh. Huh. Yeah, GameStop shares fall as Reddit fuel traders seek next thrill. So that's their headline. They're looking for the next thrill in the market. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, I think I sent you that text. Uh, there was this kid who was like, you know, he's a uh, college student and he had a couple thousand bucks and it, the price was at $400. He's, and he asked everybody, should he buy? And this one guy replied, it's never too late to phone all. Oh my, he, yeah, I saw that one. That's, that's all I need to hear. All right, go. Oh, yeah, crazy. Yeah, they're stuck. Yeah, those guys are crazy. I didn't even look at it today. Let me uh, pull up one of my screens here. Yeah, I mean, nobody nobody knew when the top was going to be, but everybody kind of knew exactly what was going to happen to the stock after it collapsed, I mean, after it was done. It would just collapse. It's a stupid trade. It's just a stupid trade, you know, unless you're in at five bucks. And here we are at $76 shortly after the open today. 77. Yeah. It always goes, everything goes back, always goes back to fair value. Yeah. It's not about the money. I got a million dollars in my account. Well, now you got none. And the scary part was, as I, I told you too, I, I was telling the wife, <clears throat> I said, people are going to, get crazy because they're gonna see their accounts evaporate. And I saw a note in there saying, I put $20,000 in, that was my college savings fund. Now it's yeah. gone, I don't know what to do. I, all I can think about is offing myself. I'm like, don't. Yeah, I saw that one too, that's scary. Yeah, it's really scary. So hopefully they those people get help and they get away from the stock market. Yeah. Because that's the last thing we need to see. Yeah, I mean, if you treat it like a gambling, a casino, then you know, you're gonna lose like you're in a casino. That was the other part I was reading too, is they were saying, you know, they took away all the fees, there's no more fees, and it's cheaper to play in the stock market than it is to go to Las Vegas now. So yeah, it is literally there now, it's their casino, and Robinhood uh, gamifying the app has drawn them all in, and 
they're playing it just like yeah it's like a game on their phones yeah like game of war or whatever else that everybody gets hooked into and they fomo in and they're with their friends and they're in the stock market and their echo chambers so they can't see reality yeah and there's a lot of uh, uh you know peer pressure because you're in these forums and you're all and you're all gathered together and you all try to you know it's really a herd mentality <clears throat> and, for sure uh, and, 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 you know, and, and in trading, you need to think independently. You need to think for yourself. You really need to, you, you got to know what's going on. Otherwise you're going to get burned and burned bad. Yeah. They're not going to be there very long. That's for sure. So back to reality, we see our ever favorite internals yet another day, very lackadaisical here around the zero line for volume. Yeah. And issues are just slightly trending down which we see the same gap now, which is leading to, haven't talked about it yet, but we're already seeing, you know, we're seeing a couple levels and we had another run up and a fairly quick sell off here on the queues again. And the NQ had a big drop right as we were opening up the room. So yeah, I don't expect to see anything major as we look at supply demand levels. Oh no, they're coming back in now. Looks like they're actually spiking as I speak here. It's up to 200, 198. No, now it's negative. So we're getting some both sides of the house here. But yeah, not very large numbers. You know, prior to this, we were sitting at a four and a five right after the open, but a big move up. So when those are numbers are low and we have big movement, there's usually not stuff behind it, especially when you start looking at the internals that we know it's no, most likely not going to last. So just always a I'm always looking at those, always a refresher, always keep your eye on those. If you don't have access to the scripts, let me know. Most people do though. So yeah. just, a, just a quick reminder how we uh, use those as our tools. And volume is now turning negative. So it's, we'll see if it bounces off the zero line like it has a few times, or if it continues negative, that'll be a bad sign for the rest of the day. And for those in our VXX trade, should be happy. Go check out the channel. We had to ride through a little storm, but calmer waters came back around. Andre, you'll especially like it if you haven't seen it yet. I know you're always checking on it, so. Good one on there. And I have to apologize for missing yesterday. I had to be away from my area, so I wasn't able to do the, the quick VXX trade conversation, but I know you guys know what's cooking there. And I'm sure you're able to make the right decision. So quick yeah. apology on that one. And we were ready to send out the Huskies. <laughs> if it was 20 below, you might need to. And if you want to hear from me next week. <laughs> and the other story here is that we had a nice gap up opening on UUP and uh, continues to move a little bit higher here. Um, I, I watched it last night. It was up about 0.1% and then it went to 0.20 and then it went to 0.30 and now it's 0.35. So it's um, it's moving up and we had a, so an 11 cents move up on UUP. Uh, so pretty, pretty decent move there and a gap higher, which is interesting. You know, we got a lot of shorts in the futures market on the US dollar and they're getting squeezed today. And so when they get squeezed, they got to buy back those uh, short futures positions and um, so that's buying back and buying UUP here. That's a pretty decent gap too for you. Yeah, it is. Some would some would call that a, a uh, you know, a runway gap uh, and it, it could be uh, what it is here because we've been moving higher. Uh, I'm thinking that something's going on where, you know, people got to cover the shorts. Uh, maybe the short squeezes in the dollar, just like GME. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get, let's get uh, Reddit to start trading the Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> we had the arrows on from Tuesday, that little, you know, potential head and shoulders. And there it goes. We're yeah. past 91 and a half right now. And, Picking up steam. Yeah. Yeah, we don't see any real resistance until we hit that 92 something, but uh, it's looking good so far. bd has got a question on any thoughts of putting on a new TLT A trade. 
You know, that's a good question. I mean, right now, when we looked at uh, when we look at the thirty year, the thirty year is at one point nine three eight. It's up a little bit again today, right around that two percent level. Is um, the chart you showed me yesterday, which is which is right up against that resistance. Yeah, I'll pull that one up here. Yeah, the long-term channel line there. Uh, so, and I think we gapped lower, didn't we, on uh, TLT this morning? TLT, I'll slide this one back over. Yeah, we gapped lower. And it's had a little move up here, but it's looks like it's got a little move back at the moment. Yeah. This last, what am I on, a 15-minute chart on this one right here. What's that red line down there? That's a good question. Like you say, suddenly these lines pop up that you draw months ago yeah. and they come back into play. Let me go to a, back to a daily. It's probably from a daily chart. Oh, uh, it's from preview uh, support. Look at that. Yeah. That's an area of support right there. And so, yeah, so maybe that's the end of the move. TLT, T TLT could be a mover here. Uh, maybe back up to the highs at 179 or 148. Let me check the options and see what the options are doing. Broke out of the wedge and then hitting support, so we'll see what it does here. Yeah, it's like finding you know five dollars in your pocket. What's this line? Oh, hey, let's pay attention <laughs> to that. Yeah, I know those are kind of fun. Uh, let's see if we go out to. Take a look at August. I mean, volatility is low, 19%. Uh, nothing nothing uh, cheap, though. I mean, they got them out to January of 2023, but they're pretty expensive. <clears throat> Even up to the 245s, they're, you know, they just mispriced. Oh, I do want to make a comment, though. Uh, somebody had texted me this morning or uh, in the Slack channel saying that there was no bid or ask on the um, UUP 30s. And that's it, typically what happens is when the market makers start to open up the uh, option contracts, they'll do the front months first because those are the most active. And then they kind of roll back to the, to, the, uh, to the longer dated ones. And so a lot of times when UUP opens on this January, on the January 22 options uh, at the 30 level that we're uh, accumulating, you just don't see, you just don't see any bids. You don't, you don't see any bid on that. You might have an ask that's kind of low or a bid that's like zero. Uh, and a lot of times what will happen is your, your account looks like it's, it's, if you're long the 30s, like I am, your account is like negative, a big, huge amount. We have to wait for those to open up because <clears throat> they'd open up the near term months and then they open up the uh, the older the uh, longer term months. Uh, so you just give it pay, you know a little bit of patience there. I also have been making a market in those options. So <laughs> I mean, when I see when I see a uh, high or when I see a low bid of like five cents or six cents on that. I'll go in and try to buy it at seven cents or eight cents or nine cents. So I'm bidding up the low end. And on the uh, on the forties, in the forties, I see some ridiculous uh, asking. You know, like eighteen cents or twenty cents or even a dollar. Sometimes I'll go in and try to sell them for eighty cents or forty cents or thirty, and I'll keep lowering the bid until they come in line. I never get hit on them, but I'm trying to make the market in it so they kind of regulate themselves. Yeah, I think what was it yesterday or the day before? We saw like a 228 on like the 38s. It's like, what are they doing? So, I don't know. I mean, either market makers just throwing it out there to see if anybody bites or. Uh, right. Yeah, it would be kind of stupid to bite on that. But hey. Yeah, so exactly what you were talking about earlier there. Like, right, here's a good example. There's been no volume yet. And the spreads, you know, 14 cents here, 13 cents, 9 cents on this one. So once they get people actually active in here, this will go to the real price. The actual price is not a cent. Yeah, exactly. So, like on the forties, you know, keep a, keep an eye on those for a second. I'll tell you exactly uh, what I do. So I'll go into the I'll go into the uh, contracts here. Yeah, Dave's gonna change the numbers right here. Watch this; it's magic. 
Yeah, I'm gonna change the numbers. Uh, see where are we? I wanna. So you want to buy those back at three cents and see what happens? Well, what I want to do is I want to I want to see they got an offer there of eleven cents, right? Yep. So what I want to do is I want to sell them one because I bought I bought some more UUP thirty calls at ten cents yesterday, and so if I could sell them at ten cents, right? They're yep. offering eleven. If I can offer them for 10 cents, I can have that spread, that 30, 40 spread for free. So watch this. I'm gonna take it from 11 to 10 right now. Give it a second. Boom. Go. Boom. See, not a valid ask because it didn't take Dave's offer. <laughs> That's right. They said, no, just kidding, it's a dime. Yep, and now I can lower it down to nine cents if I want. Yep. See, okay, I'll sell them for nine cents, you know, what the heck? That's how you find uh, what the real price is. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not, yeah, there's no price discovery on these yet because they're still really, really long term. But if I want to sell it for nine, I can go ahead and sell it for nine. Looks like one person bought one. We got one volume. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Nine. See one. <clears throat> but yeah, not a bad idea there, uh, Andre uh, BD, about uh, if there's opportunities for new ones. I think it's going to move higher, but I'm not sure how to play it because there aren't a lot of um, cheap out of the money calls at this point. But I would do, uh, I might do something at the money because I do think it's going to bounce here. This is pretty good support, I think. Um, so, uh, full disclosure, you know, I should probably note I had a, since we're talking about A trades, we did have a spy trade on that's expiring in 43 days. And I closed out my short side. I bought them back for three cents this morning. So I locked in the profits on that side of the leg. So if anybody's out there got a spy trade on, you might want to take a look at that yourself. Not advice, just saying that's what I did. Yeah, and now, and then you can always sell, like um, we, we talked about yesterday, you can sell above that, uh, your long strike prices, but you don't have to sell as many. So it doesn't have to be one-to-one. -one. If you still think there's some downside to them, you can sell a smaller number of the uh, higher strike. Just to keep some insurance on that side. Yeah, so you're doing a ratio spread. So if you had, you know, 10 at the long strike price, you could sell maybe three, four, or five at the, at the higher strike price on those puts. Collect a little premium while you're waiting. Yeah, for sure. Since that one does have some time left still. Not as much as UUP, but there's still time. Yep, absolutely. Ugh. I was long uh, the M2K uh, this morning, and I got out when it was up one percent. Now it's up one forty. It was on fire. That's should've for sure. That's a rocket ship this morning. Yeah, should have let that one run. Oh well. Well, it's busting through both those levels. That's kind of a rare one. Yeah, yeah. I got out right right when it was up against that level and pulled back a little bit. Yeah, 1.4 percent up. NQ is only a quarter percent. I say only half a percent on the ES and three quarters on the YM. But let's take a look. How is the rest of the world looking here? Yeah, it looks like it actually did that potential. I wouldn't say a bounce, but it recovered back to the positive on the on the volume. But still. Just a flat line there, basically. Yeah, this is a just a very very strange market. It does it kind of reminds me a little bit of the market in um, when was nine eleven? That was two thousand eleven. Oh uh, one. It was oh one. Yep, twenty years this year. Wow, time flies. I'm telling you. Um, I was watching the market in, in 2001 and everybody kind of thought there was going to be a, a pullback and it, there was really because the, the dot-com crash uh, happened in 1999 to 2000 and then we kind of started coming out of it in 2001. A lot of the uh, up and down volume was kind of like this in 2001. After 9-11, the market crashed and then it started coming back little by little. Um, I don't know. Uh, when I look at the spreadsheet now, uh, the bears had an opportunity to come in. It was a huge gapping hole yesterday on the spreadsheet. 
the last couple of days, rather, not yesterday, the last uh, two, three days ago. And we did, we actually dropped down uh, that first, uh, it was either the first or second day, which day was the uh, Sunday night, Monday trade, where was that? Yeah, so it was, uh, it was that's Monday on the, on the first, and we were down 300 points early in the morning. And, uh, you know, that was, that was the gap. And then we recovered and went straight up. So the bears had an opportunity there, especially with a couple of bearish herding going on. Uh, but they could not, they could not push the market lower. They couldn't get it lower. And I think on the second two, we also had a lower trade early in the morning and it recovered. Yeah, there was a pullback of about hundred points. I sent an email about that because they were showing this two days in a row. And yeah, yeah, we definitely had a pullback yesterday, then it rallied up higher. So yeah, so, more bearish, or excuse me, more bullish herding forming, swig signals turned around, buy sells back on the positive, and the LT signal is moving back up now. So definitely bullish signs, but we do still have AVS over fifteen hundred consistently. So keep an eye on that. Those are some warnings. But uh, MT vols dropped into the seventies yesterday. We'll take another reading at the end of the day today and see where uh, Thursday finishes out. But definitely some, uh, there's mixed potential there, but more on the bullish side than the bearish side at the moment. Yeah, when there's no bearish herding, it's not gonna happen. And we start, we start to see that bullish herding start to fill out again. I think we're going higher. Don't really have any other targets. I, I was kind of looking at the S&P 500 around 4,000. That'll be a big psychological one just in itself. Yeah. Those big numbers. Just like we traded the uh, NASDAQ when it hit 10,000 last year, there was a big drop because you know there's going to be a whole pile of sell orders sitting at 4,000. Same thing will happen there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was, I was long uh, UVXY, which is the uh, triple um, uh, ETF for the, the, the VXX, the, the VIX. And I wrote it from 10 to 14, it hit 16. And pulled back in that morning, uh, Monday morning, when the market was down 300, started moving higher. I said, Jesus, it's not gonna, it's not gonna push down. So I got out around $14, had a nice little trade. And then I tried it again when it was starting to go down 100 points. And uh, I got in when it was like, now I think the market was down maybe 20, 30 points early in the morning. And then when it down, went down 100, it just would not push any, it just, I mean, you can see there's like three bars. I forgot if I was on a 30 minute chart. It just kept hitting that level. I don't know if you can pull that up on Monday or not. On uh, MES? Or no, you were on the... I was on the UVXY, but... Um, yeah, I can pull it. Okay. Just a, just a quick uh, lesson here. Because <laughs> I lost money on this one. So, I mean, sometimes the losers are as good a, uh, as a uh, uh, teaching tool as the winners, right? Uh, see which way, which one is Monday? Is that Monday? Monday was, I think it was a, the first, I think it was right? Yeah. Yeah, Monday was the first. So um, yeah, well, I got out. So I got out Monday, then Tuesday, you can see it pushing up there right around the 14.8 level. Yep. And I had gone long right around 14.2. I kind of waited too long, I think, to get into it. And um, it kept, it, it hit that 14.80 level. Like you could, it would not punch through it. No, it was a day after that. I tried to zoom and it zoomed too far. There we go. Yeah, they're right there. Now you can see. So you, yeah, so you can see those patches, it was like one, two, three, four, five, six bars there. It just could not pump up through that 14.80 level. And I was holding on to it. Then I said, ah, oh, it's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. Do, 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 do. Nope. <laughs> nope. So I ended up getting out at 14 and ended up losing uh, some money on that one. But yeah, when you see those bars, I, and that's on a five minute, I mean, it, I saw it on a 15 and it just kept pouncing right up against that level and it just wouldn't break through. I knew that I should have taken that as a clue that that was it. It was over. It's always easy to see in hindsight, right? You're like, how did I not see that when I was in the trade? It's like it's yeah. staring right at me. Like, we're not going higher, sir. Yep. So I ended up losing money on that one. I ended up getting out around 14. So 
Well, it would have been a lot worse. Look where it kept going. Oh yeah. Well now it's, you know, 1040. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to hang on to that one. Um, I, I do think, I, I do think though the UVXY is probably going to pop at some point. I'm going to maybe dollar cost average into it, but I'm going to buy like, you know, maybe 10 shares here and 10 shares there, stuff like that. I, I tried it again. I think, um, was it yesterday, the day before? No, it was two, no, that was Tuesday. That was Tuesday. I, didn't, I haven't touched it since. There you go. So anyway, it, learn from that when it bounces up against a resistance area and it just will not punch through, just like those lines, just like our lines here um, and the person's pivots. It ain't going. Yeah, Barry, someone had asked me if they take trades off, bounces off these levels. I use these as exit targets. Like if I'm in a trade and I see it reaching one of these levels, I'll take my profits off before it has a potential of bouncing. I don't play them as bounces personally. That's yeah. the way I use them. I use them as like warning indicators. Hey, we're coming up to a possible spot of computers and algorithms triggering. Do you want to take your money off? Mm -hmm. Take it and run. Yep, absolutely. So with really that, guys, we'll probably wrap up the week unless you got any final thoughts that we didn't get to, Dave. Yeah, I mean, uh, just a one quick uh, uh, comment on your last point there is that, you know, have you ever played computer chess? It's been a long time. Man, those, that, those computers are good. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you're really playing against the computer here. Uh, all these are algorithm trades. And uh, so when you got a profit, you got to get out. Yeah, unless you're setting up for a position trading where you don't care what these are, these are all set up for, you know, day and swing trading. These aren't put for positions. I would be on, you know, daily charts for positions. This is all watching the quick trade. So if I'm in a day trade, that's why I'm keeping an eye on these. Exactly. So if you say, yeah, we know these, you know, the Whopper is going to fire or the Tandy's going to fire or whatever fun supercomputer is going to fire that they run them on now. I want to get out before they fire and then they, they affect the market. Then we yeah. use all these signals to trigger it. Yeah, you're not trading against another guy. And we're not trading against each other here. This is a computer controlled uh, marketplace. Yeah, so you're playing against the computer. BD says, are we looking for another correction in crypto or are we off to the races? You know, I don't know. Um, it's been pretty strong over the last few days. Uh, we Even as the DXY has continued to go higher. So I'm not sure if that relationship is, is kind of you know, on hold or paused, or maybe the relationship has changed. Um, but what I have seen is like certain cryptos have gone up a lot. Other cryptos have not done anything. Um, Ethereum is definitely the, the darling at the moment. Yeah, Ethereum. Uh, people just love Ethereum. Well, today it's got a pullback. Yeah. Which is. I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Bitcoin had pulled back. Now it's kind of starting to rally up again. Was was at the big top. There's a lot of volatility in those bars. I mean, some of those bars are like, you know, 10,000 points. Yeah. Um, so, and then we had XRP rise again and then get completely sold off. Uh, Immediately then, sold off. Yeah. yeah. That was within it was day. quick. It was, I don't even think, I don't think it was at that high for more than a half an hour. It just completely, it just went right back down. Uh, I, I don't know. I really don't know, BD. I think the, um, I think I'm going to, you know, I'm playing my DXY. I like the DXY trade. I think that's great. I'm not going to get involved in crypto until I see much better prices. I think that, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the projects that have real utility will probably shine in the long run. And I think Ethereum is probably one of those, but I'm not buying at these levels. Sorry. No, not going to do it. That's one of those where it's even hard to get your hands on some things now with all with, you know, XRP being delisted. I don't even know if there's maybe one or two places people in the U.S. can buy it anymore if they wanted to get into that. So do your research and see where you have availabilities because, yeah, the game of crypto is changing in a hurry or, you know, they're making rules. We'll see what legislation has or they're talking about it. They could very well come out with everything that you guys have been playing with for the last 10 years is off the table. And we're doing this new thing that no one's even heard of yet. Anything's possible. Absolutely. All right. We appreciate you guys as always coming out. BD, thanks for the awesome questions and uh, striking it up. You're welcome, Curtis. 
We will try and stay warm. You too, sir. We'll be bundling up. Prepare for the next polar vortex. It'll be in the headlines. Oh my gosh. Where's that southern jet stream when you need it? <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you, Dave. See you, Dan. Take care, everybody.